Get Basel YouTube. How's it going, everybody? Got for you guys today a post narrated showdown match that I had the other night after trying to get a couple games to get a good match. And after getting 6 0'd and 6 0ing people, I finally had this pretty decent match. It is a little bit lengthy, but it is a very, very good match using a team that I did do a live with. So if you guys would like to check that showdown live out, I'll link to that. Should be down in the description and at the end of this video so I'm not gonna be going over my team too much but if you look at my opponent's team yes he does have a Zygarde however though this is not a power construct Zygarde as that did get banned depending on what kind of set this Buzzswole is will determine on how I can deal with it if it's like a sub bulk up variant then that could be a little bit of a problem and this uh, blank here is Alawala Marowak which shouldn't be that big of an issue depending on if he's offensive or defensive so if I can figure out which kind of set it is I can go from there. The downside to this matchup is that my team is based around hazard stacking and my opponent has a defogger and a rapid spinner which I did not even know Kamala could learn rapid spin. So yeah that actually really really sucks. Magnezone if it's choice specs could actually be a huge huge issue to my team considering that the best way I have to deal with it is with my Necrozma and kind of predicting around it and hoping that I don't get a wrong switch in against it. So yeah going into this match Buzzwool and Magnezone I think were easily the biggest threats but in return my Mamoswine literally just destroys his entire squad and then potentially late game Porygon Z could Z conversion and win so yeah that was kind of the game plan so I'm gonna lead off with my Necrozma just hoping to get a good matchup against whatever he decided to lead with as I end up going for the T-Wave I thought that he would have potentially wanted to switch out although I don't think that you can still paralyze mons in Misty Terrain, right? Or is that only for status moves? Not status moves, but like, I know if you go for Scald, I don't think you have a chance to burn it, but I'm guessing it also works for statuses as well. But I also thought that it was just for uh, Tapu Fini, so on the off chance that he did switch out and I could status something, then I decided to go for T-Wave. At the same time, I was literally not worried about anything that this Tapu Fini did want to go for, so I'm gonna take this chance to go for my Stealth Rocks, even though he did go for the Calm Mind that's really not that big of an issue because there's no move that he has that will be able to to a KO or really damage my Toxapex here so I can safely just go for the Haze on the off chance that he did want to try and stay in as he brings in the Kamala I'm thinking okay what can this do to me like this does nothing I can just go for recover here and then maybe burn him with Skull but I forgot that this thing's ability allows it so it does not get status and you know what, okay, there's gonna be another surprise that I did not know this thing had. So he turns out to have U-Turn, Earthquake, and Rapid Spin. So I still don't know what his last move is at this point as I managed to burn the incoming Magnezone that's really, really good. So I'm gonna make a switch into my Tapu Bulu as he actually makes a switch into his Tapu Fini. And obviously I am in a very, very good scenario right now in this match so what I'm gonna do here is make a pretty aggressive prediction because it's still fairly early on in the match if I really wanted to I could have honestly just gone straight for the wood hammer here but I am going to be aggressive and I'm gonna predict the Marowak to come in and I'm gonna smack him with an adamant max attack stone edge and if I had rocks up or maybe a lair spikes I would have been able to knock him out so as he brings in the Magnezone I'm able to catch that wood a wood hammer which is really really good and here I end up making a really dumb play and honestly what I should have done was just stayed in with Tapu Bulu I really had no reason to switch out against his Magnezone but I thought that maybe a Specs Flash Cannon would do too much damage to me as he actually ends up going for the hidden power fire I'm guessing maybe expecting me to bring in my Skarmory which I guess wouldn't be too bad of a play regardless though I'm gonna take this chance just to get my rocks back up as he brings in this Kamala now we are at a bit of a standstill here I can't do anything to him but at the same time he can't do anything to me and it looks like I will be able to beat this thing 1v1 except for the fact that he has the bloody wish. <laughs> he 
he has Wish, and I T-waved, I guess maybe expecting him to want to switch out, I don't know, it was a little bit late when I had this game, regardless though, it didn't matter what I went for there because I wasn't going to be doing any damage. So he goes for the Wish, and then he switches directly into his Magna Zone, and I was so, so upset at this play because I should have just gone for the Wood Hammer. I am adamant max attack in grassy terrain. Nothing is safely switching in. I'm knocking out this Marowak, and I'm going to get off a huge amount of damage on that Buzzwool. I guess if he did feel like switching directly into Buzzwool, uh, nature's madness wasn't a bad play, but as you see here, he actually switches directly into his Magnezone, and I'm not sure if he thought he could live this hit or what, regardless though, even though I got off 11% uh, before he got the wish, he's gonna get the wish now and be brought back up to almost full HP, and I'm just gonna stay in here, and I'm gonna go for the Horn Leech, I really don't care what he wants to do here, if he wants the Flash Cannon, that's fine, I should be able to easily take it, and then I can just switch up moves here in Wood Hammer, as he's gonna bring in the Magna Zone, so it's a really good thing that I was able to weaken the Tapu Fini, because now it's a little less of a problem, as I switch directly back into my Necrozma, the burn is starting to wear down Magna Zone a bit, so what I can do here is either just go for Psychic, try to get on my rocks, or potentially pull a double switch, but I am just gonna go for rocks, even though yes, he does have Rapid Spin on this, anytime that he does Rapid Spin, that just gives me a free switch out into something. So I end up bringing in my bunker here, hoping that maybe he would want to switch out, knowing that he can't really do anything to me, that's why I end up going for the Toxic, thinking that maybe he would risk trying to get a free switch into Zygarde, but the good thing about me going for Toxic is that he is now in a scenario of where if he brings in Zygarde and I Toxic him and he does turn out to be a substitute or a Dragon Dance variant, then Zygarde is on a timer and he's just going to be weakened and lowered into a range of where my Ushard has a better chance to knock him out. So I do expect him to want to stay in here or not risk bringing in Zygarde and potentially trying to bring in something like the Buzzwool so I can Toxic that as well. Especially because he most likely is an offensive Buzzwool as opposed to a setup variant. Regardless though, unfortunately, the Tapu Fini is going to gain this wish and he's going to stay in here and go for the Ice Beam. I'm guessing he thought that I would over predict, but no, at this point his Mons are low enough to where his only real switch-ins are Buzzwool and Zygarde, and regardless, one of them is going to be taking relatively good damage. As he turns out to be Life Orb, I'm thinking, okay, he is not going to be able to 2 Kaomi because he's going to have superpower, but no, he turns out to have the Hammer Arm, and then I whirlwind him into literally the worst possible thing, which was this Magnezone, and my Skarmory pretty much does nothing in this match and I highly doubt Skarmory would have done much of anything because its main role is to get up spikes but the good thing about this is that as he brings in Marowak I can just bring in my adamant Mamoswine and literally KO anything that he wants to switch in with the appropriate coverage move. So in comes the Magnezone, I'm not gonna risk staying in here, so I'm gonna switch back into my Necrozma, and I am still wearing down the Magnezone thanks to the burn. As he switches into the Kamala, I do just take this chance to get on my rocks again, because again, if he rapid spins, that just gives me a free switch out into something, and then we can go from there. Kamala is just really, really annoying for my team to deal with, and because he has Earthquake, I can't comfortably switch into my Z conversion Porygon Z and try to set up on it because I will be turned into an electric type. So I go for the Scald after he crits me with the Earthquake and he's going to end up going for the Wish this turn as I unfortunately make the dumb play again and I go for the Nature's Madness. I'm not really sure why I did it that time. I think I did expect him to want to bring in the Buzzwool again. So on the off chance that Woodhammer didn't do too much to him, I knew he would gain back um, his HP with Wish and I could still get off some damage, but it's okay seeing as after Lefty's Necrozma will be able to live one more Flash Cannon so I can safely go for the Moonlight here and thanks to the Grassy Terrain I will be brought back up to full HP as he ends up going for the U-turn here Maybe thinking I would want to switch out. I was so close to going for rocks I almost went for the rocks So I would have been able to have rocks up here And maybe that would have given me a bit of an advantage in this match as he brings in the Zygarde I'm gonna make a very very aggressive switch into my Mammoth Swine just on the off chance that he did end up going 
for a Dragon Dance. If he goes for a Substitute, then he's not going to be able to 2 a KO me with any move that he has. So in return, I can break the sub after taking one hit, then potentially outspeed him or live another hit and then still KO him with the Icicle Crash or even the Ice Shard. So I do Icicle Crash here, uh, risking the miss. Honestly, I should have just gone for the Freeze Dry, but I mean, it's fine. As the Thousand's Arrows will not be able to knock me out. I am faster than him. And him switching into Magnezone really, really did cross my mind. But honestly, I'm in a scenario at this point in the match where I don't have to predict to still most likely win this battle. If you get what I'm trying to say, like, yeah, I could have Earthquake here, and it probably would have sped up this match a bit, but it really wasn't necessary for me to do that, because Icicle Crashing this is still going to do a lot of damage, especially with the burn, and I do still have a pretty good switch into this Magnezone in my Necrozma, and I can safely just Psychic here, or I could even go for my Rocks or try and go for the Moonlight. As I do go for the Moonlight, he ends up switching directly into his Zygarde. The good thing about this Necrozma set is that it shouldn't lose to Zygarde so expecting him to want to set up here I'm actually gonna make an aggressive switch into my Tapu Bulu but he ends up going for the E-Speed which honestly is not that big of an issue because I can still live any other move he wants to go for because his final move is most likely Coil so he's Thousand Arrows, E-Speed, Coil and Substitute which means I'm just going to click Woodhammer here because I can get off a huge amount of damage on the Zygarde and then just revenge kill him with my Mamoswine if he decides to stay in. If he doesn't stay in, then whatever switches in is still going to take a good amount of damage. And because I've been going for Nature's Madness over and over again in this match, I am very positive he's not going to risk bringing in Buzzwold this time. So I do decide to make the aggressive play and go for the Horn Leech as opposed to going for the Woodhammer. I'm guessing that I knew with Horn Leech and Grassy Terrain I could live more than one hit from the Zygarde. That would actually make more sense now that I look at it. So yeah, I'm able to Horn Leech, knock out the Magnezone. Regardless, I was very positive he wouldn't bring in Buzzwall. So it turns out that he has Earthquake on this thing, which is actually a little bit scary because it's become a slight bigger issue for me. If he had superpower, this thing honestly wouldn't have been that big of a problem, but because he did have hammer arm, he was able to knock out my Skarmory, but expecting him to want to go for the Earthquake one more time, I'm gonna make a very aggressive switch into my Porygon Z, and because he has not Scarfed Buzzwall, I can basically just stay in here and click Tri Attack and potentially knock out Buzzwall or get off a huge amount of damage as I am gonna be able to knock him out because I am Adaptability. He's gonna bring in the Zygarde. Unfortunately, I do not have the Ice Beam, so I have to go for the Tri Attack here in hopes that it won't allow him to set up too much to the point where he could potentially win. So if he had gone for a second coil there, I still might have actually been able to live the E speed and got off that tri attack damage. Regardless though, I can bring in Necrozma and at this point I will be able to safely 2 a KO Zygarde and because I am a rather bulky variant of Necrozma, he will not be able to 2 a KO me with any variant of moves that he has and that is pretty much the battle because at this point Kamala could try and stay in here and wish uh, earthquake or U-turn as much as he would want to. It's just it's not gonna get him anywhere and I'm going to win the match. So yeah, that was a pretty uh, lengthy battle, but again, I thought that this was a pretty good match, especially showcasing uh, Necrozma against something that I really think a lot of people underestimate. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy the match, then make sure to hit the like button down below. With that being said, check out the videos on the end screen and I will see you all tomorrow. So let everybody. Because my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from flying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared, I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain Tears are hoping, I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real